My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. Woo, all right. Let's get this done. Remove two cards, but lose all gold is a pretty instantaneous pick for me. Okay, there's a path that has two elites in the midline, has a bunch of question marks, but also has late question marks and late elites. Like, oh, it could be so good. Just got to survive those two elites. So we've set up the enemy so that three strikes kills. And any hand that isn't three strikes should be defensible enough. Great. That'll do it. Ooh, that could have got out of hand real quick. It's like a dagger throw just as a value pick early. Just have some damage. Didn't really want to shop here. Unfortunately, it was a question mark space that just happened to be a shop. Oh, well. That happens from time to time. I'm just going 5,000 miles an hour here at the very start because I really, really, really want to find the right card. Take a dagger spray there rather than the Masterful Stab. We've seen Masterful Stab in a build like this recently, and it was not good. Give me the relic. Three attacks in a single turn in order to gain three max... Uh, sorry, three max HP. Uh, three attacks in a single turn gains four block from the ornamental fan there. Not half bats. All right. I will fight these, but this is... Uh, this could be a problem. So we get one of them down, but we're already vulnerable. And they're already dealing 15. Yikes. Hopefully I draw the neutralize here. Didn't draw the neutralize. But removing 15 from the field as well as blocking for 4 is the absolute best that I could have done there. Overall, we ended up taking very little damage in that combat. Pretty pleased. Odd Mushroom. When vulnerable, take 25% more damage rather than 50%, as well as an Endless Agony just for some extra front-loaded damage. We're going to have some difficulty with the Lager Ball in here. Okay. Hopefully next turn I just have a bunch of offensive cards. Nope. That's not the bunch of offensive cards I wanted. Now, I'll just discard the Endless Agony there so that I can draw it again. Uh, the big reason I actually want to draw the Endless Agonies again is because the because of the Ornamental Fan. So if I've already played three attacks in a single turn, there's no need to play the other uh, Endless Agony when it can provide us more block later on. Lame. We could easily end up dying here. All right. <clears throat> if we don't die here, we are going to need a really good relic in order to get us past. Damn it. The merchant restocks cards, relics, and potions, and all prices decrease by 20%. Skewer? Okay, that's really good. Because I really want to go for this path, take out this extra elite. Tori, whenever you would receive uh, 5 or less unblocked attack damage, incre uh, sorry, decrease it rather to 1. It's really important I can kill a sentry early. So I'll attack again now. So we'll be taking six damage this turn, but we did manage to remove an enemy from the field. We only need one defense per turn, and we're fine at the moment. Uh-huh, we'll only take one damage this turn. Come on, one defense. Well, that's more than I asked for, but it's okay. 
Is it okay? Yeah, we still have two defense left in the deck. It's pretty likely, but not guaranteed, that we'll be able to defend next turn. Good. All right. Thank you, Tori, for uh, letting us survive this fight. Well, so far. No need to speak too soon. What would the next... Yeah, there's no next hand that doesn't kill or defend. Kunai! Every time we play three attacks in single turn, get one dex? Hell yes! All right, now we want to play safe because we have the right relic set. Uh, remove a card from our deck? I would, but I actually kind of like the balance of the deck at the moment, so I'm going to heal there. Hell yes. All right, so we have our eyes on a bunch of different cards now. Cards that give us shivs in particular for the kunai. Play Dance. Add two shivs to your hand. Upgrade it. Add three shivs to your hand. And that is an instant trigger of the kunai, so it's plus one dex just for playing it. Obviously, Endless Agony is already really good in that kind of a deck as well. Beautiful. I mean, I couldn't have even scripted that fight better. Whew. Don't want any of those. And definitely want to rest here. I don't have the damage to just knock over this enemy. Can I play six attacks this turn? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I can. And then I play the Skewer for nothing, but it still gets the Dex and still triggers the Ornamental Fan. One more attack in this hand. No, I'm not going to do it. One more attack in that hand would be nice, though. Do I split the enemy this turn? It gives us a bunch of decks, but it's a bad split. It's not good. No, I don't split him this turn. It's a really bad split. Yeah, we need Skewer to do the split. So 52, you'll split at 26. So we can get you to 27 with the strike. Beautiful. Now, obviously, what we're looking to do is just kind of dunk on one enemy here. Great cards to pick up that turn. So we only need a string single strike next turn. And we can take down the backliner. This could be a problem. I want to save the neutralize for the spike slime. So 10 damage on that is not enough. So I actually need to use a swift potion here. Looking for a defensive card. And we managed to pick one up. Do I split them this turn? No. Even though I get an extra point of dex for doing it, I should really hold off until they have an aggressive card. That's two pretty aggressive cards, we're fine. And I was no longer weakened by that point as well. Alright, we're done. So we actually managed to make it through the first floor there. We now have a really, really, really strong build. Uh, after Image is really interesting here because we want to play a bunch of small attacks and that will help us with the Kunai. 
But Burst is also really interesting because bursting a Blade Dance is just an extra point of dex. And this deck would naturally take Cloak and Dagger, which would be another great Burst target. No energy. What is... This is really annoying me now. Uh, I, I can't find energy relics for the life of me. This started to annoy me in High Ascension as well. This deck can't can't just not have energy. It's got two zero cost cards, but it's got an X cost card and it's got a burst. And when the burst is upgraded, you want to play two skills after the burst. So that's burst, another card, and another card. Ugh. Right. Elite's drop an additional relic when defeated is what I want to go for, but I feel like that will probably kill me. Let's take the Runic Pyramid again. It feels like there do need to be more energy relics in the game because there's, there used to be more, or rather, there used to be fewer non-energy boss relics in the game, but now, like, most of them aren't energy, and energy is so damn important. It just feels really bad. Hey, there's some really nice paths here. All of them have a bunch of question marks and a bunch of upgrades. I know where we're going with this now. Just need to empty my hand so I can burst blade dance. My hand's never going to be empty enough to burst blade dance. Oh, damn it, Rooney Pyramid. So what HP is that? That's 34. So if I steroid potion, I can dagger spray and skewer. I just want my money back. Got a ghost in the jar as well. It's a pre-upgraded uh, blade dart. Hell yeah. Upgrade a card. Let's upgrade that burst. Like, it's obviously really important to me that I have extra energy so I can play more of these GD attacks. space in my hand to do anything with. Oh, God. Alright, energy potion as well as flying me is good in the early game, but it's really not great late. I do need the extra energy though, so I think I just have to take it. Damage this turn. Obviously, not what I was looking to do there, but it's fine. We'll capitalize upon it. Works out as a turn anyway. Come on, thirty five. Reach those mythical heights. Damn it, stop healing him! Healing is cheating!
He should be relatively well covered now. Good. As you can see, our dex gets nutty. It's just we don't do any damage. Flying knee, just to help cycle through my deck. Duplicated card in my deck. Just another blade dance, sure. Let's get that skewer upgraded so that we can actually deal damage because we do have two elites upcoming. This one's definitely where we use our liquid bronze though. Three points of decks in the first turn, completely defended by playing aggressive cards. Lovely. I do have another blade dance in there. Okay, and now I can actually burst the blade dance. Finally. And I'll use the ghost in the jar to save me from taking 12 damage. So we'll take six, but then we kill. Buy a book of stabbing. Hello, Vajra started combo with one strength. Okay, that is good for us. Footwork is actually not what we want here. It is pre-upgraded and we still don't really want it. We already generate decks really quickly. What we want is Cloak and Dagger, which actually benefits from decks being a card that gains block, but also gives you shivs, which are super useful for generating the extra decks from Kunai. So it's kind of like a, a one card great scaler there. It's the beneficiary and uh, benefactor of the Kunai. Lantern, gain energy on the first turn. Yep, I'm just taking any energy relic at all. Just offer them to me, I'll take them. Pretty good turn there. Now this turn should, by all rights, just be a giant skewer, but I do need to thin down my hand. So I'll be playing absolutely everything. This is just so I have space when I have my other blade dancers in hand. Oh look, speaking of... That's a lot of damage that you intend to do this turn. I'm just gonna casually defend almost all of it. I already have lethal next turn. By Gremlin Leader. <clears throat> Took one damage that entire combat. Uh, the boot, whenever you would deal four or less unblocked attack damage, increase it to five. Funnily enough, that is the same as Kunai for me, right? Uh, not Kunai, Vajra for me right now. Because the lowest damage I deal is four. Corpse Explosion, Cloak and Dagger. So Corpse Explosion gives me AoE in this deck. And I just hold it in my hand until the right time to cast it. But it's up against Cloak and Dagger. The problem if I take Cloak and Dagger here is that we have a lot of shivs in the deck. But no damage. No, I take the Pokemon Dagger. It's fine. I'm worried about what happens if we get the Time Eater, but if I just play well enough, <laughs> which I know is an outside chance, but we'll give it a shot. If I just play well enough, it should be okay. First play dance. And does this take the enemy down? I think it might. Piercing Whale is a great defensive option here. Smith yet again. 
Upgrade the Cloak and Dagger. <clears throat> There's very few cards in the deck left that I actually want to upgrade. Cool. And Piercing Well could be super useful later. I don't want to just leave the skewer in hand. Yeah. It'll be fine. So if I burst Cloak and Dagger, I fill my entire hand here. Then I'm fully defended and I get extra energy for the next turn, courtesy of that flying knee, and then the skewer's lethal. No. Well, actually, I do need zero cost cards in my hand so that I can just run them out. I'll take a slice there, sure. By the late game here, we're not going to be taking damage, so. Oh, gosh. I'll dagger throw just in case we get bursts, which we don't. That's okay. Definitely want to hold on to both of those. AoE gets more important when there's AOs to E, I guess. Uh, double piercing... Oh, God, that's a loud plane. Double piercing whale here is not that great, but we don't have that much in the way of removal of artifacts from our enemy, so I wonder if that's the best it gets. I could also just dagger spray double flying me, only protect myself for four this turn to get a bunch of extra energy. Actually, that seems the right play. So that only seems the right play for one reason. Mm -hmm. And that one reason is because... Wow! I had all of my shiv generating cards and I only got one of them. That one reason is because if I got all my shiv generating cards here, I would have been in a... great position. Oh well. That's frustrating. Just got two cards from hand there. Calipers is obviously ridiculous for us right now as well, just in case we get it. Oh, double up on the blade dance as well. Hell yes. This is what I wanted to do last turn. Now that we've got all this decks, we should pretty much just be able to well, almost full block. We gave full blocking a red hot go. We desperately need an energy relic after this boss. There's actually just no way we win unless we get one. Three, one, two, three. We have so much decks. There we go. And Lethal. Second chance at taking that corpse explosion. I think we will need the AoE next floor. Yeah, I, I have to take the... Ooh, Philo Stone or Coffee Dripper? Are we going to rest next floor? I mean, we're usually really well defended. Feels like we don't need to. No, but we're also really well defended, so we shouldn't have to worry about the downside from Philo Stone. Philo Stone being gain one, or rather all of your enemies gain one strength. 
the start of each combat. So I do need to pick up all of my keys on this floor, which isn't great. That's okay. Good lord. So if I discard that, then I can burst blade dance. Then burst the other blade dance. And I get to Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, so that's just five casual points of dex on the first turn. Damn it. really hoping I was going to draw the the card that was lethal that I forgot the name of. Corpse Explosion, that is. This will set us up for lethal. It's okay. Need any of those? Inexplicable voices, curse of writhe, and then I heal. No, we'll just lose the max HP. Transformer card? It'd just be a strike. The viscerate? That's now unplayable for us, so really not good. Accuracy! Shivs deal three additional damage. Not bad for us, actually. Uh, I want to take Accuracy. I probably also want to take the Hand Drill. Whenever you break an enemy's block, apply too vulnerable. Girya is ridiculous for us. You can gain Strength at Rest Sides up to three times maximum. And then we'll card remove the Eviscerate that we can't play. So now I should just be looking to go to Rest Site, Rest Site. Okay, so the first Rest Site's up here. Come on, and just walk all over him. Lovely. And this is without the accuracy. Right. Dodge and roll. Dodge and roll benefits twice from decks, and we have a ridiculous amount of decks, so obviously it's our go to here. Will accuracy burst blade dance? Oh my god, this is gonna be so good. Burst the blade dance. And yeah, I'll follow it up with a dagger spray. That's a lot of damage for turn one. Defend, defend, survivor. That's a lot of damage for a turn two. All right, right back at me. Fair enough. Well played. Touche, good sir. Okay, now what you don't know is that the boot overrides intangibility, so I can just kill you. Back of preparation, start of combat, draw two additional cards. That is going to make our opening hand real chunky. I'm going to take the deflect here, pre-upgraded. Again, it's just so that I can filter things out of my hand really quickly so that I don't end up with a hand full of cards that I can't play. Okay. Now let's burst the Cloak and Dagger. So this is like the worst version of bursting the Blade Dancers, but that's okay. If we had a shuriken, this build would go off. I'm going to keep the neutralizing hand. Most of that is because I suspect that the enemy is going to attack soon. But it didn't attack as soon as I would have needed it to for me to care. So 
So we full defend with just the survivor here. Wild. Speed potion. Uh, that'll kill the backliner. It's just about how I kill the frontliner or just defend. Alright, fine. I'll just take some damage here, I guess. Alright. Shuriken! Every time we play three attacks in a single turn, wait! Gain one strength. Uh, we'll take the Sapphire Key here because we have to. I'm probably gonna rest at the next place as much as I want to get the extra damage. The extra point of strength doesn't matter as much anymore because we've got Shuriken, which will generate a lot of extra strength. Oh, you just watch it. It's gonna, it's gonna do it at the same rate as we get the decks. It's gonna be wild. It will be biblical. So let's carry an energy forward. Run out of hand too quickly as well. There we go. Got to remove some cards from my hand just to make room for the burst. Blade dancers that are coming up. Speaking of. Good lord, that's ridiculous. This is the shiv build I'm always looking for when I'm looking for a shiv build. This. Swift Potion, as well as nothing. I will just rest here for safety's sake. Because I do now have to take out another Elite. I'm actually really happy to lose the Accuracy at this point. Sure, Accuracy is extra damage. But, have you considered that Shuriken is extra damage as well? And it grows so much faster than the accuracy does that having accuracy and drawing accuracy rather than drawing, say, Burst or Blade Dance or Cloak and Dagger or just another attack is not really worth it for me. Okay, I need to play one more card so that then I can Burst Blade Dance and follow that up with the Burst on the Cloak Dagger. Hell yeah. Dono and Decker are my final boss as well. Oh. This could scarcely have worked better. some reasonable damage, I guess. I'm definitely playing these out of order, but it's really not going to matter. Min-maxing every single turn when it's not even going to be close. It's just a way to make an episode take a thousand years. I do need extra energy, but I only have one card that discards my entire deck. Um, yeah, it has to be obtain the random boss relic. Just keep attacking, just keep attacking. 
All right, theme down that hand, summit fierce. I will actually need to draw this turn, wild. That's more my speed. And now I get two extra decks next turn. Not decks, sorry, extra. <laughs> Energy. And we kill. Gambling chip. At the start of each combat, discard any number of cards, then draw that many number of cards. That is insane. I really want to lift. No, obviously I have to recall. Oh, that was close. I wonder how this is going to go against the heart. Oh. Now I can burst Blade Dance. Then burst this Blade Dance. And... I mean, if I Blade Dance again, that's 26 incoming damage. That's okay, I'll just dodge and roll. So this backliner only has one artifact left because I tried to neutralize them last turn. Now, Corpse Explosion applies two debuffs. One, apply six poison. Two, when the enemy dies, deal its damage and max HP to all enemies. So you can see it's not going to have poison, but it does have the Corpse Explosion effect. That is really important. It's exactly what we were looking for. Thirty-two incoming damage. I mean, it doesn't matter if I perfect the fight at all. But now, as soon as I kill that backliner, I just win. And... Boom. Told ya. 1040. Not bad. Not half bad. <laughs> just to repeat myself. Mm, is there anything I actually want to smith here? Because I feel like it's probably lift. Hell yeah, get that second lift going on. Medical kit. Damn. Uh, Calibers, at the start of your turn, lose 15 block rather than all of it. That is extremely powerful for us. We gain way too much block constantly. Orange pellets is also interesting. Whenever you play a power skill and attack in the same turn, remove all of your debuffs. There's not that many debuffs that we apply to ourselves and we have no powers in the deck, so do not really make sense for us. Okay, there wasn't an artifact relic. Good. Artifact potion, that is. Mm. Okay, now I can burst blade dance. Actually going to target in the other direction here. The Cloak and Dagger as well. Very much looking to kill the Spire Shield as soon as possible. No, I can't Corpse Explosion them. I'll just kill them myself. Corpse Explosion them would have taken... Uh, would have resulted in me taking a lot more damage than I was comfortable with there. Uh, which is to say, literally Annie. Just emptying out the hands. Beautiful. Happy flower! Every three turns, gain it. Oh my god, finisher! Deal eight damage for each attack you play this turn. Yes! <laughs> oh yeah! Okay. 
Okay, defend. I don't think I can burst this turn. No, I just have to keep the finisher in hand, right? So Piercing Whale is obviously just to negate, like, the turn this. The turn this? This turn? What? What is your brain, Ryan? Great. More than happy to take all of that. Um, definitely looking for draw here. Didn't get it. All right. Uh-huh. That's a lot of damage. Oh, look, all of my cloak and daggers. Finally. Well, I'm going to leave this cloak and dagger in my hand just in case I get no defense next turn. First cloak and dagger. Calipers should be taking over now. Yeah. 21 block at the end of this turn. 5 by 15. That's, uh, that's some damage right there. Are we dead? Seventy-five incoming damage. I mean, we can't change our turn based on anything right now. So, defend, 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 defend. It's like a bunch of defenses left in the deck. Yeah, we're dead. Just. <gasps> Dory! Dory, you've done it again! Great Scott! <laughs> I always forget about Tori in those dang heart fights. Oh man, I need to start looking at Tori every single time I get it and going, that's real good for the heart. It's real good for the heart. All right, so our final level of unlocks here. Concentrate, setup, and grand finale. Uh, grand finale is one of the final upgrades. That makes sense. Or rather, final unlocks. So that's all of the unlocks for the silent now complete. In the next episode, we'll complete them for the defect. And then after, the ironclad who lacks one episode behind due to... <clears throat> Hutzpa. Hutzpa? Hutz Hutzpa? I can't say it. I'm... Moxie. Uh, it's <laughs> lacks due to Moxie. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Hopefully You've Been Enjoying Yourselves. Uh, Slay the Spire. Goodbye. Forever. Uh, except for in... Wait a second. This is the first episode of the day. Okay, so goodbye forever. Except for in two hours. And then two hours after that. And then two hours after that. I'll be back then. And then the day after. And the one after that. Etc.